Now, when, when we talk to people in a university or just generally an academic background working in an academic IT department, typically we find a lot of database knowledge. I mean, people are very familiar with databases. But the programming background doesn't tend to fall into an object-oriented category. <clears throat> There's exceptions to that. Mostly, at pretty much every school I've talked to, there'll be one or maybe two people who've done some Java or some C++ or maybe one of the .NET languages like C Sharp or VB.NET. Uh, but that's about it. They, they don't tend to have a huge object-oriented background. It tends to be familiarity and maybe working with it a little bit rather than a lot. Uh, also on the issue of web applications, there tends to be some experience with a web application, maybe using PHP or something like that. Sometimes it uses more extensive things like Java web frameworks or servlets and JSPs, but not really that common, not, not that much. Of course, you have lots and lots of experience with the Banner product, and there's a lot of experience using the various mechanisms inside Banner, like Oracle Forms or, or other plugins. So before we dig into the, the meat of it, let's just figure out what some of these terms mean. What are these things all about? First of all, Grails is a framework. That means it's basically a a partially constructed web application. It's an app that already exists with the plumbing and, and the, the routing and everything already ready to go. You're just supposed to plug in your controllers and your domain model and customize your view the way you want and Grails will take care of the rest. Now Grails, I will, as I'll demonstrate for you, has a lot of real convenience features a lot of mechanisms that make it easy to build a web application very, very quickly. It's uh, relatively new. Grails has only been around for a few years, but it works all the way from the view back to the database and back. And what makes Grails really different from many of the other application frameworks out there is that Grails builds on existing technology. Grails is not trying to, say, reinvent the flat tire, which is what I like to say when people try to reinvent the wheel and they get it wrong. You know. uh, but Grails is based on existing open source, freely available projects that are very popular in the Java industry, things like the Spring Framework and Hibernate. And Grails simply uses the groovy programming language to customize how those applications work, how those underlying tools work, to make it very easy and effective. Now, this makes Grails a rather interesting blend of old and new. It rests on this, these older foundations, these high, very mature technologies, but of course everything has been revised and customized to make it as, take advantage of as many of the newer developments as possible. It's heavily involved in the term they call convention over configuration. There's not a lot of config files, there's not a ton of XML you have to manipulate or anything to get things to work. Mostly if you do things the way Grails expects you to do them, then everything works just fine. You don't really have any issues with it at all. If you do things the way Grails doesn't expect, then you have some customization ahead of you and possibly some, some work there in, in the code as well. One of the interesting features of Grails from the banner point of view is that um, if you use, again, if you use Grails the way it's intended to be used, you should be fine. It should be relatively easy. And especially those people who do not have an extensive object-oriented background, that's probably going to be your life for the, for the first few months or whatever amount of time, your startup time in using the technology, is you'll do things the way Grails prefers them done. And that way, you'll still be able to stay relatively productive while you're filling in this additional background, assuming you're interested in doing so. It's an open source technology. Everything can be downloaded for free, including the source code. I've done that on many occasions, and, and frankly, that's not a bad way to learn some things about it. Not that I dig into the details of the source code itself, but good open source projects tend to be loaded with test cases. And that's, uh, in a, in a real, real way, test cases are like executable documentation for open source. So while the documentation may or may not be great, you know, in some places it's excellent, in some places it's a bit weaker, the test cases will tell you how the technology is intended to be used. So I tend to look for those things and, and dig into that. But Grails in general, again, if you follow its conventions, is a very easy framework to use, very easy to deploy and work with. 
basically the deployment story comes down to the same as that for Java. If you've got an application server that supports Java, then you can deploy a, a Grails app the same way you would deploy any other Java application and it'll work just fine. I'll talk about that more a little bit later. So again, how can a version 1 product be mature? Grails is currently at version 1.3.5. That's the version I'm going to be using when I do a little demonstrations today. And how can you call something like that mature? Well, again, it's the underlying technologies that are really where the maturity comes from. The Spring Framework is a technology in the Java world that is pervasive pretty much throughout the Java industry. It does a lot of what they call dependency injection. It handles the life cycle of objects. It, uh, I like to call it a Swiss Army chainsaw. It's this massive framework that really touches pretty much every API in the Java world and makes them simpler and easier to use. Hibernate is a technology that is designed to work with databases and to convert database tables into objects and back again. The uh, term ORM there means it's an object relational mapping tool. turns object-oriented uh, elements like classes and, and objects into relational tables and back. You have to provide the mapping. You have to tell it how to do this. But once you tell it what the mapping is from your classes to your tables, Hibernate takes care of generating all the SQL and executing it all and opening and closing transactions as required and everything. It's a very powerful technology, very mature. Both Spring and Hibernate are version 3 or above. SiteMesh is an open source technology for handling the view, assembling the view out of various pieces inside of a web page, basically. There's some Ajax libraries that are built in, Prototypes, Scriptaculous, a couple others, I think. I think they're moving toward building in jQuery. Any libraries that aren't there, you can easily install through a plug-in mechanism. Uh, Quartz is an open source product to allow you to schedule jobs, like cron jobs or whatever, so the things will run on a periodic basis. Again, there's a plug-in for this that, that works with Grails immediately. Where does Groovy fit in? Groovy, in one sense, is Java. It's not really Java. Obviously, it's a separate language, but Groovy compiles to Java bytecodes. Java runs by running on what they call a virtual machine, a Java virtual machine, a JVM, that you install on whatever platform you want to use. It could be a workstation, it could be a mainframe, it could be a PC, it could be a Mac, it could be whatever. And that's the heart of this whole write once, run anywhere idea, is that you write your code in Java, you compile it to these bytecodes, whatever the heck a bytecode is, and then run it on the virtual machine. Well, Groovy may be a separate language, but it also compiles to bytecodes that run on the same virtual machine. So anywhere where you have Java installed, Groovy can run as well. Groovy basically takes Java and simplifies it in many ways and enhances it in many other ways. Groovy is a very uh, comfortable language to work with for Java developers. Java developers learn it very rapidly. There's a whole family of new languages that work on the JVM. Groovy's one of them, of course. There's others you may or may not have heard of called, uh, for example, Scala or Clojure is another one. Uh, there's a language called JRuby, which allows you to run Ruby code on the JVM as well. Of all of these languages, Groovy is by far the easiest for Java developers to learn and to use. Now, where does it come into this picture? Well, Groovy is good on its own. I tend to use Groovy a lot on its own for simple scripts or even for fairly extensive programs. But Groovy is also the language that ties all those pieces together in Grails, all those underlying technologies like Spring and Hibernate. Spring and Hibernate are written in Java, and they will always be written in Java. Nobody's going to port Spring to Groovy. You know, it's fine just as it is. Hibernate, of course, I shouldn't be quite so blunt. Hibernate is in Java. There's also an nHibernate version that run, runs on the .NET framework as well. But what we're dealing with is the Java aspect of it. 